Thanks for joining us. You're watching Arirang News Break on this Thursday, May 19th. Live from Seoul, I'm Han Daeun. We begin at the nation's top office. Leaders of South Korea and Mongolia held summit talks this morning, sealing deals aimed at expanding exchanges and economic cooperation. Our presidential office correspondent Song ji Sun has the details. President Park Geun-hye sat down with her Mongolian counterpart, Tsai Yag in Elbeck Dort on Thursday for a summit aimed at upgrading their comprehensive partnership. First, the two leaders agreed to expand people to people exchanges by increasing flights between the two countries. Occupancy currently tops 90 percent in peak seasons, as the number of flights has not increased in a dozen years. But ahead of its launch of a new airport in 2018, Mongolia will allow more carriers to fly the Incheon Ulaanbaatar route in addition to launching a Busan Ulaanbaatar route this summer. Given the expected increase in carry-ons, Seoul and Ulaanbaatar vowed stronger cooperation in quarantine inspections for animal and plant products. Mongolia is the fifth largest country for smuggled beef, and Korea is hoping the regulations will help curb the problem. The two leaders also signed MOUs on construction and urban development, through which Seoul exports its smart city model. Through its Economic Development Cooperation Fund, Korea will help finance 10 development projects in education, energy and transportation worth $1.2 million. Song ji Arirang News. The final plenary session of the outgoing 19th National Assembly is currently underway. Lawmakers are in the process of approving scores of remaining bills. For more on that, political correspondent Ji Myung-gil joins us on the line. Myung-gil, give us the latest. Hello, Dallin. After 11th hour negotiations, Korea's three major parties have agreed to vote on 130 non-contentious bills. However, around 10,000 other bills have been scrapped as they failed to receive final parliamentary approval. Several government-backed bills, including four labor reform bills and a bill to promote Korea's service industry, did not reach the floor due to the opposition's dissent. Meanwhile, the opposition parties have been asking for revisions to a special law to extend the operation period of an investigation into the 2014 Toyota Ferry disaster, but failed to reach an agreement with the ruling party. The outgoing 19th National Assembly has the dubious honor of being dubbed a vegetative legislature by critics who point out that it passed a record low number of bills. In other parliamentary news, the three parties have agreed to hold their first meeting with the finance minister and other government officials on Friday to discuss ways to revitalize the economy. All right, myung uh, and uh, how are the preparations going for the 20th Assembly, which begins in less than two weeks? Well, Tao, not much significant progress has been made yet. But the full leaders of the three leading parties will meet in about two hours' time to discuss how to fill the 18 parliamentary committees. The parties are scrambling to seize the chairmanship of key committees and remain divided over who should take the coveted position of National Assembly Speaker. The main opposition Minju Party of Korea insists one of its lawmakers be named Speaker since it has the most seats now. The ruling Senate Party, which has one fewer seat, has expressed reservations about the idea. The minor opposition People's Party, which won more than 30 seats in last month's election, is siding with the Minju Party on the Speaker post and is vying to take one of the two co-vice speaker positions. Back to you, Tal. Thank you, myung for that. An Egypt air flight from Paris to Cairo has been reported missing over the Mediterranean Sea. According to airline officials, there were 56 passengers and 10 crew members on board flight MS-804. The plane was about 40 miles north of the Egyptian coast, flying at 37,000 feet when it went off the radar at 2.45 a.m. Cairo time. That was about 30 minutes before its expected, uh, expected arrival time of 3.15 a.m. Reuters says, citing airline officials, the plane is likely to have crashed into the sea. The report also cites Egypt's state newspaper Aram, saying the pilot did not send a distress call, and the last contact with the plane was 10 minutes before it disappeared. The Egyptian government has deployed a search and rescue team to the spot where the plane went missing. We'll bring you more on that as the story develops. 
If North Korea has succeeded in miniaturizing a nuclear weapon, it's highly likely it has made it small enough to fit on a medium-range Nodong ballistic missile. A former head of South Korea's Air Defense Artillery Command said in a statement Thursday that Pakistan possesses missiles that were developed based on the North's Nodong missile and that North Korea acquired nuclear weapons technology in return. His claim is based on interviews with defectors who testified that Pyongyang has succeeded in making nuclear warheads similar to those made by Pakistan, which are small enough to fit on a missile. The Nodong missile, developed in, in the 1990s, has a range of some 1,300 kilometers. North Korea claims it has succeeded in miniaturizing a nuclear weapon, but South Korea and the U.S. remain skeptical. Korea's finance minister has once again said Hyundai Merchant Marine will be forced to seek court receivership if the shipping company fails in negotiations with the owners of its chartered fleet on rate reduction. After a meeting with economy-related ministers on Thursday, Yu Il-ho also said he would wait and see what the ship owners and Hyundai come up with as the talks are ongoing. Just yesterday, the shipper and its creditors and ship owners met with the goal of slashing charter rates but were unable to reach agreement. The government, which runs the company's main creditor a Korea Development Bank has set a deadline for finishing talks that expires Friday. The finance minister added the government will work on preempting any possible financial instability that could be triggered in the process of corporate restructuring and build a social safety net for the inevitable job losses. And that does it for now. Stay tuned for more domestic and global news coming up here on Arirang. Thank you for watching. Thank you.